peak oil and a changing climate. Hi, I'm Tom Harbin. Join me in listening to various experts discuss fossil fuel depletion and global warming. Peak oil means a production peak. It means that you can no longer increase production. It's not a reflection of, directly of how much oil is under the ground. It's a reflection of how much you can extract in any given year. And so the inheritance of oil that we have is finite. And at some point with a finite resource, you can no longer increase production year on year. And we are arguably at that point right now. And so we are looking at a plateau at the moment, but ultimately we're going to be seeing the, our ability to produce oil declining year on year. Uh, for example, the, Ameri the Chamber of Commerce, the main business lobby, the American petroleum industry, other business lobbies have uh, publicly uh, proclaimed, in fact, with enthusiasm that uh, they are carrying out a campaign to try to convince the population that uh, global warming is a liberal hoax. And uh, it's it, it, it succeeded, unfortunately. The latest polls I've seen show uh, maybe a third of the population uh, believes in anthropogenic global warming. Uh, the media contribute in their own way. Uh, so, for example, when the New York Times uh, runs a front page article on uh, uh, what meteorologists think about global warming, namely, they don't believe it. Uh, meteorologists are pretty faces who read scripts telling you if it's going to rain tomorrow. Uh, what do they have to say any more than your barber? But that's presented as if it's a significant uh, contribution to the discussion. The same when they, you know, in favor, you know, in pursuit of the fabled objectivity, uh, present uh, two sides. Uh, one side is 98% of scientists who know anything. The other is side is uh, uh, Senator Inhofe and a couple of stragglers, and that's the two sides. And you're supposed, to, people are supposed to make a choice between them. Uh, they leave out a third side, uh, which is the substantial number of climate scientists who believe that uh, the consensus predictions are much too optimistic, including some of the leading scientists right here who've recently run what they call the most extensive modeling ever done that concludes that it's far worse than anticipated and that their own results are an understatement because they don't take into account uh, such things as... Uh, uh, effects of methane after permafrost disappears and so on. So that's the debate that people are presented with and it's not surprising that the effort to manufacture consent to the belief that uh, it doesn't mean anything is uh, pretty successful. But what's rather interesting about this and tells you something about the nature of our society is that those same CEOs and managers who are trying to convince the public that, that it's a liberal hoax, know perfectly well that it's extremely dangerous. They have the same beliefs that you and I have. Uh, but, uh, so they're, they're caught in a kind of an institutional contradiction. As leaders of major corporations, they have an institutional role. Now, that is to maximize short-term profit. And if they don't do that, they're out and someone else is in who does do it. So it's, they don't, it's basically, it's, institutionally speaking, it's not a choice that's going to happen in the major institutions. So they may know that they're mortgaging the future of their grandchildren, and in fact, maybe everything they own will be destroyed, but uh, uh, they're caught in a trap of uh, institutional structure. That's what happens in market systems. Uh, you know, financial crisis is a small example of the same thing. You may know that you're, what you're doing is carries systemic risk, but you can't calculate that into your transactions, or you're not fulfilling your role and somebody else replaces you. In fact, in the United States, it's actually a legal obligation to do that for corporate executives. So, and that's a very serious problem. It means that uh, we're marching over the cliff and doing it for institutional reasons that are pretty hard to dismantle, uh, there's other factors like the uh, the anger and uh, 
fear and hostility in the country about everything carries over to this. So if you look at polls, everyone hates Congress, uh, they hate the Democrats, they hate the Republicans even more, they hate big business, they hate banks, and they distrust scientists. So why should we believe what these uh, uh, pointy-headed elitists are telling us? We don't trust anything else, we don't trust them. Uh, all of this combines. The, the latest uh, election a couple of days ago is a uh, you, know, it, you could almost interpret it as a kind of a death knell for the species. Uh, there was an article in uh, Bloomberg Business Week, you know, not a radical rag exactly, uh, running through the new Republican uh, Republicans coming to Congress, and they're worried about them. Uh, one of the reasons is because they are global warming deniers, almost all. That means the powerful House committees, are, like science and technology and so on, are going to be in the hands of people who think there's nothing to it, or at least claim that they think that what they actually think is another story. Uh, in fact, one of them was quoted as saying, can't be a problem because God will take care of it. Now, you know, if this was happening in some small uh, country in, you know, maybe, uh, you know, I don't know what, Monaco or something, it wouldn't matter much. But when it's happening in the richest, most powerful country in the world, it's a, it's a danger to the survival of the species. Uh, nobody else is going to do very much if the United States doesn't do a lot, not just some, but take the lead. So we're essentially saying, let's kiss each other goodbye. Yeah. Right. Please come back and watch complete interviews with each of the experts. And you can join me, Tom Harbin, anytime on the web at TomHarbin.com.